Okay, good morning. Good morning, California. Uh, on behalf of my uh, co-director, Professor William Chair and myself, we would like to welcome you to our Storage X Symposium again. Uh, professor Doron Alba is a professor in Bar Ilan University. All the people in the battery field know he has been working on the battery for a long time uh, with very extensive program on um, many things related to batteries. Let me just mention a few. We all know Dolong has been uh, uh, very instrumental and in try to figure out the SEI structure. The whole battery fields has been using widely. Um, you remember the patterns, the schematic drawing we all cite over all our career. And also Dolong's name is also associated which we call a method in my lab along ARBA method to determine the columbic efficiency of lithium metal. So uh, Dorong, your name is clearly associated with that all my students using your name uh, for this uh, methodology. Uh, Dorong has achieved quite a bit of, uh, you know, I think have a lot of discovery having uh, educated the whole community quite a bit. He has won numerous awards. Uh, for example, the International Society of Electrochemistry's uh, Frumkin Medal and the Electrochemical Society's Alan Bond Medal Award. These are all highly prestigious awards. Dr. Kang Shi is from Army Research Lab. Uh, Kang is well known for his work in electrolyte. Um, if you look at the, his publication, right? I mean, I remember when I get into the battery field by reading about Kang's uh, uh, electrolyte review, a uh, very long one in chemical review. I learned tremendously, tremendously from his review. That has becoming a classical uh, papers for nearly everybody in uh, the battery field to read. Um, Kang certainly has done a lot of nice work related to electrolyte interface. He's also a winner of uh, the Battery Research Award and the Electrochemical Society. Uh, with this short introduction, now I would like to turn the podium to uh, Professor Doron Alba to start his presentation followed by the Kang. Doron, please come onto stage and, and take over. So good day, morning, noon, afternoon, night, any place in the world for all of you. And uh, thank you very much uh, for the uh, Stanford team for this uh, challenging invitation. I'd like to uh, entertain you this, uh, this time with Frontier in R&D of high energy density rechargeable batteries. Uh, here there is a list of my uh, officers, of my group. I should acknowledge collaboration with the other uh, group from uh, my university working on the surface treatment, compute, <coughs> uh, computational work, solid state NMR. I also uh, should acknowledge co collaboration with um, BSF, with General Motors. And also uh, here in Israel, uh, uh, all the electrochemical, electrochemistry groups working on, 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 on batteries and, and power sources are gathered together in the Israel National Research Center for Chemical Propulsion that I lead. And we, in fact, in Israel, we turn uh, competition to collaboration. So we work together on batteries, fuel cells, uh, whatever can help for uh, uh, propulsion. There are four major use of rechargeable electrochemical power sources. We have portable devices, mobile electronics, uh, communication, uh, power tools, here, lithium uh, batteries are conquering the markets. Uh, energy density is important, of course, safety. Uh, well, this is, this is a commodity. Everybody depends now on, on lithium battery technology, so this is uh, well familiar. The success of um, powering mobile electronics led to the next challenge is electromobility. <clears throat> Here, we need high energy density. Uh, with some uh, compromise um, on, on, on durability, cycle life safety. Uh, and uh, this is, I, I would say, 
our main main challenge today in, in, in batteries to promote the electro electro mobility revolution. We have another uh, issue, another challenge of propulsion, which is very high density batteries, especially for unmanned aviation and robotic uh, mobility. Here we need lithium metal <clears throat> electrode. We want to see the re renaissance of lithium metal anodes. Um, lithium oxygen batteries would be the best if, if, if they would work, but we need a lot of research time in, in order to make it uh, true. Lithium sulfur uh, is, is better, uh, is working, but uh, today uh, we we'll discussed today the issue of um, uh, lithium, uh, lithium metal um, anodes in high energy density batteries. And of course, there is large energy storage uh, uh, for huge quantity, uh, large energy storage. Here we need huge quantity of materials. We have to use a banner elements. I'm talking about terawatt hours. If you think about how we really help to use sustainable energy, we're talking about huge amount of materials. In fact, in fact, if I have to think about the best battery for uh, load leveling application and for large energy storage, lithium ion battery technology can provide uh, the, uh, the, the task here combining uh, lithium titanate, LTO, and uh, lithium iron phosphate, LFP, together. We have excellent batteries for, uh, uh, for low leveling application as well. The thing is that if we succeed with the mobility re revolution, we'll have to see more and more lithium going to the roads, and there will be, there may be shortage of lithium. But here comes another field, uh, which is not competing, but other complementary, which is fuel cells. Fuel cells, the field of fuel cells progresses very well. And so the progress in the fuel cells and fuel, propulsion by fuel cells can leave some lithium also from other uses, also for large energy storage. Today, the most important challenges now are uh, um, we want to show, develop, demonstrate, confirm the best lithium ion batteries for transportation to promote the electromobility revolution. And here the key factor are the cathodes. And also we want to see the renaissance of lithium metal anodes in rechargeable batteries um, in order to obtain very high energy density. So here solid electrolytes is a, a very a valid option. But uh, I vote for uh, uh, liquid electrolyte solutions with fluorinated, so fluorinated solvents. So the cathodes. Um, in fact, I would, I would leave graphite as a major, uh, as a major anode material. Although we show, we, we, we show nice work with silicon, and there, is, there are efforts so with uh, silicon uh, or silicon carbon composite throughout the world. I still vote for, if, if you think about electromobility, if we think about, uh, about safety, we think about durability, I, I'm voting for graphite. Because anyway, the key issue is the cathode. And here we have two families. In fact, we are converging into two families which can really produce very high specific capacity and together with graphite, high energy density. And these are the nickel rich uh, material, NCM. NCM is nickel uh, uh, cobalt manganese. This is the major uh, formula here. And here the stoichiometry of lithium is one. What is nice about this compound that we can extract the ma a maximal capacity, which is quite sufficient, uh, while charging up to 4.3 volt. Not too high, we're not endangering too much our electrolyte solutions. Um, so here in the middle, you have the voltage profiles of several compounds. Uh, we see um, uh, plateaus due to olivine structure and due to spinel structure. And we see the sloping voltage profiles of the layered compounds. So here, the blue one rela relates to the layered, what we call NCM materials. And here, as we increase the amount of nickel, we can get higher specific capacity, but more problems. And we have this uh, very interesting discovery of the so-called lithium and manganese rich NCM. Uh, so whenever the stoichiometry of lithium is more than one within this compound, uh, we have a segregation, we have a, a structure which contains also this lithium-2-MNO3 monoclinic phase, which is initially inactive, and 
uh, there is an integral structure here between the uh, rhombohedral and monoclinic phase that can be activated, and with activation, uh, we can obtain a high specific capacity that can uh, re uh, that then approach even 300 milliampere hour per gram. And in fact, what was discovered uh, recently is that this uh, the, the high uh, specific capacity is because of oxygen activity in this uh, system. So this is the typical first cycle voltage profile. We see here the activation process. We have to push the potential up to four point, above 4.6 volt, what endangers our electrolyte solution. So the, the selection of electrolyte solutions is, is critically important. And we have the high specific capacity. Now, the structure is very complex and uh, we can discuss hours the structure and there are still open questions. But one thing we discovered quite cl uh, clearly, a key issue here, because we expose the electrolyte solution to oxygen species, and because we have an issue of oxygen evolution, and because we have also issue of uh, dissolution of transition metal cations into the electrolyte solution, and, the, the, and these, these cations in solution have terrible impact on the passivation of the negative electrodes, a key issue is to isolate the active mass from the solution species. Remember, we have on, the, on, on these materials very electrophilic and basic species, especially when oxygen enter into uh, electrochemical uh, reactivity. And in electrolyte solution, we have acidic species and electrophilic species like the alkyl carbonate. So we have very uh, rich uh, chemistry between the solutions and the active mass. So we have to prefer buffer zone. And there are many ways to do so. Uh, we vote for ALD, the, the, the gas treatment, the ALD. And what we can see now, what, what, what we can see and what we can say, uh, that we have several treatments and we can uh, offer, uh, I would say, even a plethora of treatments that form good buffer zones uh, that uh, stabilize the material. When we talk about stability, we have two issues. One is the uh, specific capacity stability and also the voltage stability. It appears that the ever voltage fade also, go down and down during cycling due to structural changes within the material. So what I'm demonstrating is that uh, we can manage. Here you can see results uh, of three coatings by ALD. I cannot um, disclose everything. It, it, this, this is different uh, kinds of alumina compounds. Uh, in which we, we, we here we we, um, we look for three different coatings, and the experiment is that we do several uh, cycles at, v at very at low um, at low rates, then at one C rate, and and then at a uh, three C rate. So we fluctuate between different rates, and we compare between a reference, the black curve, and all the other uh, uh, colored, uh, which uh, a curve which relate to coated material. And we demonstrate stabilization. We demonstrated at least with uh, the green, with the, the coating number three, the green one, we demonstrate quite nice uh, specific uh, capacity stabilization. Uh, having uh, more than 200 milliampere hour per gram at one C rate is not that bad. And when we have uh, uh, slow rates, we uh, exceed the 270. And here you can see cycling over 500 uh, uh, um, cycles, which is not too bad. But also what is very nice is the effect on the, on the, on the, on the voltage. So here you, you can see the voltage, average voltage, discharge, charge along 400 cycles. And here you can see the hysteresis. We also count the hysteresis, the difference between the discharge and charge voltage. This is very, also a very important uh, 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 parameter. And we can see very, compared to the reference, Along 400 cycles, we see the increase in the hysteresis. And here, with the coating, we get stabilization. Uh, whenever we have good uh, electrochemical stabilization, it is well reflected by the thermal studies. So here, in this chart, you can see results of DSC, uh, reverse scanning calorimetry, where we react um, uh, the active mass uh, with electrolyte solution, standard electrolyte solution, and we measure the onset of reaction heat evolution and you can see here the number. Uh, when we talk about re the reference material, the uncoded reference, the heat evolution is by far higher. So we see nicely here the correlation between 
electrochemical and thermal stabilization. So I would say that here, um, here we are going to win with the materials, but there is still a question, the question of stabilization of the electrolyte solution, which is not that easy because we have to push the potential of charging to high values in order to extract the high capacity, and we have here still a challenge. So we can go to the nickel-rich material. Sorry, I have to go to get back to the, to the source. We have to go to the nickel-rich material. So this is the formula of the nickel-rich materials. And here, the stoichiometry of the lithium is one, and we play with stoichiometry of transition metal. All together is one. So as we increase the amount of nickel, look here. We go along this road. We go steep, up, up, up with the, with the concentration of nickel starting from 111, which is 33% 30, uh, nickel, up to even LNO, 100% nickel, and we steep up with the energy with specific capacity, but the road becomes more and more uh, 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 troubling because we have an uh, issue of cracking, we have instability. Here you can see images of particles after cycling when we have high concentration of nickel, we see the cracking. Cracking is a big problem here because we have issue of phase transition and the uh, stresses, um, especially when we want to extract the high capacity. Fortunately, we, have, we, we can go up to 4.3 volt. Uh, here we, we do not endanger our electrolyte solu solution, but when we go up to 4.3 volt, we have stresses in the material. Uh, and uh, when we have electrochemical instability, structural instability, we have also uh, a, 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 ther a thermal instability. Here you can see results of ARC, exertion uh, uh, rate calorimetry uh, testing. And when we have high concentration of nickel, we have uh, even uh, explosions. So what we can do, uh, in the rest of my talk, I will concentrate on these important materials uh, at two different aspects. So what we can do is uh, doping. It appears that when we dope these materials, with um, uh, metals like uh, cat catalysts like zirconium, I'll show you more examples, but zirconium is a good example. We have both bulk uh, stabilization and surface stabilization. And you, will see, you see here several aspects of our results. First of all, we see uh, this is the electrochemical uh, uh, chart, where capacity versus cycle number. And the red curve relates to our stabilized material. We see the stabilization is better rate capability. Impedance spectroscopy show very nicely the stabilization, much lower impedance. The, um, we see that we mitigate uh, undesirable spinel, uh, uh, layer to spinel trans trans uh, uh, transformation. And um, the computational work uh, confirmed that from a genetical point of view, it is true. And this is another, another this is a, a, a voltammetric uh, uh, curves demonstrating the sharper curves of the dope material because the kinetic is better. So the electrochemical response reflected very well. So this is one example. I'll show you another example. The next example relates to uh, uh, here, we take def different uh, uh, cations. We take the uh, compounds in ethyl, in a, I'm sorry, in ethanol solution. So we have like, uh, we can have organic salts of the, of the compounds. So we evaporate the, um, uh, the solution containing the, uh, the uh, dopant compound. So we have now dop uh, the, the coating on the surface. And now by heat treatment, we can force diffusion of dopants inside. And now we can do like a nearly combinatorial study with several dopants like zirconium, magnesium, titanium, aluminum, sodium, silicon, tantalum, and we here, this is capacity versus cycle number. And we see the stabilization by the stabilization of the capacity. Now, it's very important to emphasize, and it's important because of the next stage of my talk, that here we concentrate on the cathode. These are experiments which demonstrate the weakness of the cathode. The lithium anode here, it's versus lithium anode, doesn't affect the capacity of the cell uh, in these experiments. By line scanning and by cross-sectioning, we can see the dopants all over. So this. This idea works at heat uh, treatment. Here we can see further uh, results related to in situ XRD. This is less important. Uh, so the idea is to coming from the surface, going inside, and we can control doping by, go, by, by the heat treatment that, for, that, that 
provided thermodynamic basis for diffusion of dopants inside. Uh, maybe one more uh, example. Uh, the previous one was 811. Now we go further to 85% nickel. And here you can see uh, results. This, uh, if, uh, in this case, um, th this specific case relates to aluminum. So you can see uh, the difference between reference cycling. This is at 45 degrees C. We get more chance for degradation and, 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 and problems. So upon cycling, in, in, in situation where the cathode is the limiting factor, we see degradation of the cathode specific capacity with reference materials. Very typical for nickel rich materials, but we reach nice stabilization with doping by aluminum and the electrochemical when, the, when we derivatize. When we derivatize the, the, vol the voltage profiles, we see this response that demonstrates stability of recycling, while with the reference, as the capacity goes down, also the old electrochemical response uh, diverses, and, and we see it well by the uh, differential curve of the uh, voltage profiles. Thermal analysis always go well with electrochemical stabilization. Here we, in this experiment, you see results from DSC measurements, where we demonstrate that with the reference, we have much more uh, heat evolution uh, in this experiment. But the most important uh, results is the morphological studies. Here, we cut by FIB electrodes before and after cycling, and we do uh, cross-sectioning, looking uh, at the, at the, at the cross-section. And always, whenever we have such a behavior, we see cracks. So we see here the cracking, which is the problem of we have. This is the reason for the instability. While whenever we have stabilization, the cross-sectioning shows that we have smooth situation. We don't have cracking. And this is because of stabilization. It's both bulk and surface. So uh, now I want to move to a next challenge uh, to combine lithium metal with these materials. So the idea is uh, I want to have uh, a lithium metal anode in order to gain high uh, specific uh, uh, energy. Uh, and uh, there are, uh, the advantages are clear. Uh, the, the, the problems are also clear. We have dendrite formation. We have side reactions. Lithium is very reactive. Lithium may, may be very dangerous as well. So we have strategies how to stabilize lithium metal anodes in the chargeable batteries. And we have modification of the surface by various mechanical, physical, and chemical techniques. We can increase the, the surface area, and then we decrease the, the uh, specific current density. In such a way, we have low current density at high surface area. This may help. Also, there is, uh, uh, by selecting cut cations, like uh, cesium, rubidium, that act like healing uh, uh, species in this electrolyte solution, they can avoid dendrite formation. Uh, of course, solid electrolytes uh, helps, but we vote with, for modification with fluorinated solvent. These are our two stars, the fluorinated ethylene carbonate and defluorinated uh, defluoroethylene carbonate. And we, we demonstrate that by this this, using these co-solvents, we can stabilize both the lithium and the negative uh, and the negative electrode. So first of all, let's see what what the fluorinated materials are doing with lithium. So these are uh, slides. It's, uh, these are slides demonstrating performance of uh, symmetrical lithium cells with uh, two types of solutions. So here, here these are solution containing FEC. And this is standard electrolyte solution based on uh, EC and uh, DMC. The experiment is very simple. We take cells, uh, symmetrical cells, and we apply uh, high, high specific uh, current. And we're talking about high loading. Uh, we work on, uh, with, with, here you can see something like, uh, mo uh, 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 like that, uh, more than three milliampere hour per square centimeter. We even can come up to, to, uh, to six. Uh, and now we cycle. Now in standard electrolyte solution, upon cycling, we see these changes of the voltage profile. So we, we do galvanostatic cycling and we record the voltage profile. This, uh, this, here we record voltage profile along very prolonged experiments, thousands of cycles. So uh, uh, each, this, this line contains many uh, voltage profiles like this one and this one. 
And here, what happens with the standard electrolyte solution? We see this behavior, which means dendrites and, and problematic uh, lithium surface. While here, we see the stabilization. Stabilization is there reflected also by visual tests of the separator of the lithium uh, electrode impedance. So, uh, and what happens is because we use the fluorinated solvents, we have options of surface chemistry, which are very useful. The fact that we have fluorine atoms means that, um, uh, that we have, um, that we have um, uh, uh, more options for surface reactions. Going further now, uh, we combine uh, NCM and uh, NCM and, and lithium. And here you can see 602, 60%, 80%, and 100% uh, nickel. And here, these are tests of uh, capacity versus cycle number with FEC containing electrolyte solution. With standard electrolyte solution, the capacity goes down very quickly. Uh, while with FEC, we demonstrate hundreds of cycles. Uh, and with LNO, LNO is a very problematic material, and we demonstrate uh, uh, stabilization. Going further, uh, we see that uh, uh, we have, uh, by, by um, F F19 uh, NMR, we can see uh, what, what is the difference between symmetrical lithium cells and uh, full cells, uh, lithium uh, um, uh, 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 NCM. We see that uh, symmetric lithium cells are more stable. So by NMR, we can uh, see to what extent we have uh, increased consumption of the FEC. Since we have uh, lithium hexafluorophosphate, we have like an internal reference inside. Uh, and this is the initial ratio. And we compare what happens uh, between symmetrical cells and full cells. And we see that the ratio increases. We, we see that uh, we have, in fact, consumption on FEC, the signal of, F, of, of uh, FEC compared to the lithium hexafluorophosphate uh, decreases. So we have, we have here uh, consumption of lithium a consumption of, 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 uh, of the fluorinated solvent because of the cathode. We have cross talk between the positive and the negative. And this, uh, 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 what it does, it deteriorates the, uh, this cross talk deteriorates the passivation of the lithium. So we have more consumption of the reactive species, which is FEC. Going further, here we see, uh, uh, um, here we see the, the case of, uh, of uh, LNO. LNO is a very important example uh, because LNO has uh, the highest specific capacity among the nickel rich materials. And this is a very problematic material that we demonstrate that we can stabilize the material, obtain very good capacity of full lithium uh, and LNO cells at practical loading, thanks to this combination of um, uh, electrolyte solution. We demonstrate that nothing happened to the cathode after hundreds of cycles, we see that both the uh, XRD and the, uh, the, the uh, observation by scanning out microscopy demonstrate stabilization. And this is because we have surface chemistry on the cathode. It is, you see here, this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the formula here. We have polymerization of the cathode as well. On the cathode also, we have leucophilic and basic species that can extract HF and can promote polymerization and formation of uh, protective surface films. So we have protect, protective surface streams on both negative and positive, and this helps us to uh, demonstrate uh, um, uh, uh, prolonged prolong work with full cells, uh, lithium metal versus LNO, and these are uh, th these can be considered as high energy density cells. Going further, uh, here we can demonstrate the mechanism. What happens, in fact, that uh, we have uh, uh, cracks in the material. And these cracks, when they reach the surface, we have a penetration of solution inside. So we have like exfoliation type reactions. So we have propagation of the, of the cracks. They start with stress, but they continue to propagate with reactions of, uh, with electrolyte solutions. And now we can get a, a complete disintegration of the material in certain cases. Now, it appears that this is work from uh, Yang Kuksan, uh, my colleague and friend, and it appears that as we push the potential to 4.3 volt, where we want to extract the maximal capacity, it's reasonable with the electrolyte solution, but it's bad with the material because here we come up to some phase transition, 
which put more stresses and lead to 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 um, to, um, uh, to cracks. So what happens with the fluorinated solvents? We have uh, coverage. We have coverage of the of the of the cathode by surface films, and now we don't have a, a chance of the electrolyte solution to go in. And even if we have stresses, strains, and cracks or micro cracks, we don't have this propagation of uh, uh, cracks with solution uh, uh, reactions that finally uh, destroy the particles. And the result is stabilization during hundreds of cycles of full cells. Another aspect, uh, so, uh, so in, fact, uh, in fact, with this, with this, um, uh, with this um, uh, aspect, I think I can, uh, I can start to, um, to uh, uh, conclude the talk. Uh, just a minute, one slide more. Yes, so uh, there are two sets of conclusions which are important. Um, first of all, uh, nickel uh, rich and manganese rich are candidates um, of uh, most suitable cathode uh, materials in lithium ion batteries for electric vehicle. In an oxide of transition metal uh, with the formula, this formula, uh, as the nickel content increases, as the specific capacity increases, delivering, we can deliver more than 200 milliampere hour per gram at high rates, but they suffer from structural instability as I demonstrate and capacity failing during prolonged cycling. Stresses that develop upon cycling lead to cracks that propagate by reaction with pollution species. So we can use dop doping as I demonstrated uh, doping helps both, uh, both, the, both, the, both the, the bulk uh, uh, stabilization, but we believe that we have segregation. Whenever we have, we have dopants, we have segregation. So we have different structure at the surface which stabilize. Most of dopants also stabilize the surface. Uh, uh, and there are a variety of dopants that were, proof, were proven to be uh, helpful. Uh, high, energy, high energy lithium and uh, manganese rich, um, uh, what we call LMR, NCM, cathode materials, can deliver specific capacity uh, more than 200, 280 uh, milliampere hour per gram. However, this material suffer from severe capacity and voltage fading because of undesirable oxygen evolution, layer to spinel phase transformation, or similar, or similar uh, structural changes, uh, and detrimental surface reactions between the active oxygen moieties and solution species. Uh, uh, we, we have um, uh, developed several types of surface treatments that provide effective buffer layers for these materials that can mitigate oxygen release, avoid side reactions between active oxygen moieties and solution species, reduce pronouncedly the solution of transition metal cations from the uh, cathodes, demonstrating impressive uh, stabilization of, uh, the, uh, of, the, of these materials. So definitely, uh, definitely, uh, we uh, we can say that material-wise, this uh, cathode, this uh, this uh, family of cathode can be stabilized. But I, I leave an open question uh, related to the uh, uh, stability of the electrolyte solution. Now, uh, also uh, concluding the lithium-rich uh, NCM lithium metal anode high loading. And I, I mentioned the, and I emphasized the high loading. Practical loading means that we're talking about several milliampere hour per square centimeter and very small amount of solution. I didn't emphasize it uh, uh, too much. It, it appeared on the slide. So when, I, when we say practical loading, we mean both uh, at several milliampere hour per square centimeter, but also very small, small amount of electrolyte solution. So uh, the lithium anode are the limiting factor. So it appears that excellent passivation of lithium anode is reached um, uh, when we have FEC and uh, two FEC. It appears that uh, these species work very well together. We can form initially uh, surface film by FEC, uh, but two FEC, and then FEC in solution continue uh, to work as a healing agent that uh, keep the surface films at a, at, a, at a good shape during prolonged cycling. So the presence of fluorine atom, atoms enable, um, uh, enable um, uh, an elimination reactions that form species with uh, double bonds that undergo further polymerization. This leads to the formation of elastic surface films with superb SCI properties. 
uh, solid electro interface properties. Now, in the presence of uh, FEC and uh, two FEC, the cathodes are also covered by uh, protecting, protecting surface field. This is very important. So the major capacity fading mechanism of uh, these cells becomes consumption of the electrolyte solution by side direction with lithium. But it appears that uh, what happens on the cathode affect not the cathode, but rather the negative electrodes. We have cross talk. Uh, so the passivation of uh, lithium deteriorates when we have cathodes uh, instead of the measurements of symmetric cells. There is a detrimental cross talk uh, between the NCM cathode and the lithium metal anode. Species form a cathode by uh, oxidation uh, deteriorate uh, the lithium passivation. We analyze some gases, CO2 obviously uh, uh, is uh, being formed, and thereby lithium lithium cells show much longer cycling than lithium NCM cells at the same loading. Uh, the use of fluorinated solvents enable excellent cycling of all kinds of nickel-rich uh, NCM cathodes because their major capacity fading mechanism is mitigated, as I demonstrate, due to the protective surface films that avoid propagation of cracks and surface reactions therein. Now, uh, the solution containing uh, both FEC and 2-FEC are effective due to synergistic and complementary passivation phenomena. First by 2-FEC, and healing uh, during prolonged cycling by FEC. Now, these studies definitely opened the door for elaborating a rechargeable battery with very high gravimetric and volumetric energy density that can, be can, can, um, uh, that can deliver hundreds of cycles at 100% the depth of discharge. They have the, ch the, the chance to, over, uh, to, to, to outperform also lithium sulfur batteries uh, due to the uh, limitation arising from the lithium metal anode, they are not re relevant for electric vehicles, but they can be used for drones. So uh, these studies, combining lithium uh, metal, fluorinated uh, uh, solvents uh, within the electrolyte solutions and high nickel-rich uh, uh, NCM uh, uh, materials, Open, can, can de, uh, de demonstrate uh, high energy density uh, uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, and this may cover uh, very well the needs of uh, un uh, and, uh, unmanned aviation and uh, robotic uh, uh, transportation. And with this, I thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Doron, for the very nice presentation. A lot of good uh, data right there. Well, we probably have uh, 15 questions right there from audience already. Uh, let me also uh, uh, share with you, right? This um, storage X symposium event, now is becoming the, for European folks, uh, becoming the uh, very nice uh, afternoon, evening, uh, you know, uh, routine now. And uh, for US people, it's a really good morning you know, starting section for California early morning for East, for East Coast, uh, just a little bit, a few hours later. So I want to start from the first question. Uh, we always have Professor Stan Whittingham actually in the audience. So he, I think, attended probably every of the symposium. Uh, I will start from his first question. He asks, is there any chance to eliminate all fluoride containing materials as they create PFAS species. I assume that's a perfluorinated, uh, you know, algae species, right? Uh, which create problem on cycling. Yeah, that's his question. I'm not sure that I really understood uh, exactly the, 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 the point, the key points in this question. Um, what I guess is uh, these uh, fluorinated compounds start to polymerize, uh, generating those uh, uh, you know, long chain uh, containing fluorine uh, organic compound. First of all, is that a problem? Second of all, if it's a problem, what type of problem it can create on the recycling, when you do recycling of the, the batteries. I guess that's probably what Stan uh, mean. Well, I don't, I, 
I, I did, I, I'm not at, at, at this moment, I cannot discuss recycling. Um, uh, if if we, we, when you say recycling means to extract back the transition, uh, the transition metals and all the elements. So I'm not there yet. I'm still struggling with performance. And performance wise, uh, I think that uh, flow, the fluorinated solvents opened the door for a very uh, impressive performance. So we can demonstrate a, a, a pronounced rate capability and a specific capacity. And we have, uh, we have here, um, we, we take the lithium, uh, lithium batteries to their horizons, I think, to their edge. Yeah, okay. Yeah, got it, Darong. So the next question, what is the mechanism behind the doping stabilization? What are the principles for choosing the element? I think this is a, a good question. Yes. Yeah, you Yes, so we, we are, I have to, to confess that we started our work uh, with, uh, let's say, trial and error. We, uh, we um, assumed that when we have a, a, a multivalent cations like zirconium, tantalum, uh, tungsten, uh, niobium, um, th this can be, uh, even vanadium, this can be helpful. And indeed, we found that uh, with the, uh, Many, many uh, multivalent cations were able to demonstrate stabilization. And then we turn to uh, computational work. Now we are guided by computational work. And the computational work definitely can, can uh, show which dopants, first of all, can uh, 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 affect the structure. For instance, um, avoid the uh, possible um, a layer to spinel a, a transition in the material. And also now we, uh, now we explore the uh, segregation situation. We have uh, evidence that whenever we use dopants, since the, the last process is, is, is a heat treatment at uh, eight, uh, nearly 800 degrees C, we have segregation and the dopants go to the surface and we have surface stabilization. And this is something that we explore. But I would say that now, uh, after we did enough experimental work, we can be guided by computational work and we can uh, select more judiciously the, the, the elements for doping. Yeah, uh, next question. Based on, based on energetic calculations. Yeah, I understand. This is uh, still in the process of trying to understand this chemistry. Um, so the next question is, what do you see as the promising chemistry that could enable us to get more than 99 on 9% columbic efficiency and lithium metal cycling. Is fluorine-based chemistry the enabling chemistry here? Uh, not necessarily. I think that uh, we, we demonstrate that in terms of cycling, we are limiting. Whenever we, we have electrolyte solu uh, uh, liquid electrolyte solutions, we have a lot of gains, but we have also uh, disadvantages in terms of, uh, of uh, we have, we have uh, unavoidable reactions. Sooner or later, uh, a major problem will be uh, 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 dry, the, the, the cells will become dry because there is no way to obtain hermetic passivation. So I, I believe that solid state batteries, solid state batteries can bring us to a very uh, nearly 100% uh, cycle efficiency but we pay a price. We pay a price of, uh, of um, uh, um, may, we may pay a price of uh, rate capability and also uh, cost effecti effectiveness uh, and, and limited, uh, limited uh, um, um, usage. But uh, with, with, the, uh, with the electrolyte, with liquid electrolyte solutions and lithium metal, I think we always will be limited. And what I, what, I, what I show is, 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 um, is maybe close to the horizon that we can reach. Yeah, okay. So um, actually- Also, just a minute, let me just add, of course, when we talk about solid state, we talk also about poly polymers. Um, yeah. uh, ionic, ionically conducting polymers is also an option and definitely uh, it, 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 even a combination of ceramic and, and polymeric uh, materials serving like composite uh, polymeric uh, polymeric matrices uh, can also help to reach uh, very uh, very nearly 100% uh, uh, cycling efficiency of lithium metal. Yeah, this is good point. On in the future, we'll bring in more speakers on the solid state. 
uh, Beatrice as well. Previously, we have uh, Linda Nazar and uh, Yogan Zianet already. We'll, we'll have more of that topic. So continue on the flooring uh, chemistry. So uh, uh, what is your hypothesis behind the effect of fluorinated solvents in mitigating dendritic deposition of lithium metal? So we, we demonstrated that, well, that from, the, from the very beginning, from the birthday of, of lithium batteries, it was clear that uh, passivation is a key issue. And sometimes we have to use not, uh, uh, we have to use even reactive solvents in order to have uh, surface reactions that will form passivation. So uh, in, in, some, in some cases, one would say, let's use the least reactive solvents so we'll mitigate or we'll avoid surface reaction, but it's not true. Here with lithium and with lithium compound, even lithium graphite, lithium, lithium silicon, we need, a, we, need we need passivation, we need re reactive materials. So we need reactive materials that will react properly at high enough potentials and will form um, uh, the, the uh, solid electrolyte interfaces with good properties. Now, what is the best properties that we can think about is flexibility. We want, uh, we want a, a surface film that will accommodate the uh, morphological changes this is true for silicon, this is true for lithium metal, where we have pronounced morphological changes when we charge discharge and we dissolve deposit lithium. So when we have uh, fluorine, we have more hell, we have more options for, we have elimination, and then we form double bond, and then we have polymerization. So we may have uh, different kinds of polymers. We have, of course, uh, reduction of the fluorine, the, flu, the, 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 FC, the FC bond to, we have, uh, we have a, a, a lithium fluoride. We also have some lithium carbonate. So we have a very interesting situation in which we have polymeric matrices in which uh, uh, lithium, ionic lithium compounds are embedded. And these matrices are flexible and allow a reasonable transport of lithium, reasonable transport of lithium ion through them. And uh, I yeah, think Dor Doron, speaking of that, this is a really uh, interesting point. Speaking of this, in indeed, another question related to this is FEC de decomposition can produce lithium fluoride and polycarbonate products. Uh, an audience asks, which of these two do you think is the critical SEI ingredient from FEC. Is it lithium fluoride or is it polycarbonate? It could be both. No, yeah. Not, not necessarily. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that carbon. What is, lithium fluoride is formed anyway, and when we have uh, uh, small enough particles of lithium fluoride, despite of its in, in, intrinsic impedance for lithium migration, this is not a good material for lithium migration. But since we have a, 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 a nanoparticles, small particles embedded with the with the matrix. We have uh, more than one mechanism of, of, of lithium ion transport through the, through the surface fields. So I, I, I'm not sure that carbonate is not a the, the, the only one necessary option. We have several uh, types of carbonates. We have, uh, and, and, and so we have, we have um, uh, alken and alkan type carbonates for sure. And also we have polycarbonate as well. So we, we have several, we have a blend of polymers. And this blend of polymer is good. It, it, it provides the right uh, flexibility uh, of, the, of the entire uh, matrix uh, that protect the surface in the case of uh, uh, electrolyte solution containing FEC. Let's uh, start uh, uh, this panel with both of you right here. I think there are a few questions, very interesting one. Uh, also from audience, also for myself, right, to discuss with you. Uh, first question is, uh, this is from the audience. I think very interesting. He asks, does Kang agree with Doron that electrical vehicles must use graphite anodes and that lithium metal will not work? And also asking me, e, can you weigh in too? <laughs> I mean, kind of discussion is supposed to be having some, a little bit of, uh, you know, debate as well. It, it's okay to have different opinions. Uh, Ken, do you want to start? And then I'll, I'll, I'll have Doron to also come back to uh, comment on this. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, despite the fact that I am in the Battery 500 uh, program, 
I still, you know, I'm still very conservative about the elicit meta. I uh, observe the uh, thermal runaway mm -hmm. of elicit meta, you know, at the end of the uh, charging the elicit meta boundary in different scenarios, both through video and through real thing in my lab. So I tentatively uh, uh, think, think that maybe in the near term for the near five, 10 years, it's way too dangerous to put a missing meta in the car. Maybe we can apply those in some other small, smaller format applications such as UAV or drones. But uh, on this uh, matter, I sort of uh, agree with drone. And okay. your turn, yeah. Well, I, 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 want to to first, yeah. I think that what is great about our community and in fact, Lithium ion battery is the greatest success of modern chemistry and maybe material science because of the reliability and high fidelity. We produce today billions of cells. Uh, we have amazingly uh, 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 good uh, line, uh, line, uh, uh, production lines. And we can now distribute billions of lithium ion batteries everywhere in the world. Uh, we can put our cell phone in, a, in the car in the summer. It can reach 80 degrees C. It, do, it can drop on the on the on the on the on the uh, <clears throat> on the ground. It can be abused, and nevertheless, it will move. So we, we see here the high reliability, and we work very hard to reach it. I am within this field uh, more than several decades, and and, and we, we are working days and night to earn to gain this uh, high fidelity, to gain this prestige. Now. It's very easy to lose this prestige. One successful accident and you are 20 years back. So when, when I think about electric vehicles and about, I think about billions of cars and billions of cars contain, uh, each car will contain hundreds of cells. And we still have to maintain the high fidelity, the high reliability. We, we have to work in a zero fault manner because electric vehicle is very risky. And a successful, uh, in parentheses, accident somewhere can kill our prestige. And we worked very hard on our prestige. Thereby, yeah. I tend to be conservative. I think that with graphite, we're in, in good shape. So we can struggle with the cathode. I think that we can uh, now demonstrate uh, high energy density uh, batteries with graphite and uh, one of these either lithium and manganese rich, uh, better even nickel, uh, NCM, uh, nickel rich NCM. And we have, and we can drive five, 500 kilometers. We, the, the rate capability is being improved. So I, th I think we are, we are done with electromobility. We can, let, let's, let's gain experience. Let's, let's go, let, let's increase our penetration to the market. Let's see the electromobility revolution taking, uh, 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 accelerating. And then we think about uh, more, uh, more, more risks. So at the moment, I think that if we, if we stay with graphite, and yet we have uh, some way to go with the cathodes, we can come up with excellent lithium ion batteries and, re and retain, retain the high fidelity, retain the reliability, retain the prestige. This is my, this is my point. Yeah, well, th thank you, Dorong. Uh, let me also express my view uh, from a slightly different angle. I think I largely agree with uh, both of you. When you go to application, you need to be conservative because of safety. No, no things shouldn't go wrong. Uh, that's from the application angle. From a research angle, right? Academia research, what can prepare us for the next? We can go aggressive. We can have different choices. But oftentimes, people might miss this up. From research, academia research, prepare for the future versus the current application. Once they miss this up, this is dangerous. I think we want to do research on, for example, new anode, new cathode, prepare for the future, but be aware of their, they are not ready. And in terms of in the application, needs to do a lot more research before we can get there. So uh, uh, that, that would be my thinking. I think largely agree with you, uh, both of you in the application, go conservative, but research wise can be much broader to, to do so. So I next- absolutely agree. Yeah, yes. yeah. N next question, I, I, I want to touch upon, I think this is also important uh, from both of you. We know the interface is so important, like Dong and Kang. Uh, and this is from the audience, this question. Also myself thinking about that as well, I want to ask you. 
So how reliable do you think X C to S E I characterization is? As a community, you know, how do we improve the quality? We are having the better technique to understand the SEI. You know, it's looking into the future. What do we need to do to understand this better? And if each of you give you give about a minute or two of thoughts, you know, uh, a lot of uh, ideas to, to the audience, that would be fantastic. Durong first. <laughs> Well, we have, uh, you mentioned EQCM. EQCM is indeed excellent, and uh, we work hard with EQCM as well. We have EQCM. So EQCM can really provide a very nice in situ tool to, um, to understand the dynamic uh, situation. And uh, we can work with, um, in terms of morphological uh, uh, characterization, we have uh, a AFM going together with EQCM, which is very nice. Um, I think that uh, I think that um, uh, we can we can do um, um, we can do um, um, uh, model chemis uh, 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 chemistry. We did it all over if, since the very beginning, and you do uh, we, and so, so we can do model model chemistry and to come up and, and then compare with the, with the FTIR and XPS uh, uh, FTIR and, and we have also another important tool. Which is a, which is a solid state uh, NMR. Solid state NMR is becoming a very good uh, characterization, characterization mean for interfaces, and we see more and more uh, uh, um, uh, progress. Uh, we have in Israel experts. Uh, we have uh, the um, uh, legendary, le, le, <coughs> legendary uh, uh, Claire Gray. Uh, so we have now. I think if we take a solid state NMR. Uh, and we can use multi nuclei, more than one nuclei. Uh, nuclei. We have fluorine, we have flu flu fluorine, we can do fluorine, we can do lithium, um, of course, carbon, uh, FTIR, solid state NMR. Raman is less important for surface characterization. And we have um, uh, and, and EQCM, AFM. So I think we are in a reasonably a good shape in, in, in understanding what's going on. Uh, FTIR and, and, and solid state NMR together are uh, very complementary and can provide like fin fingerprint of, 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 uh, of, of surface, uh, surface compounds, which may be uh, valuable. Uh, we have been trying uh, to work closely with the uh, instrumentalist and uh, spectroscopist. So I mentioned the EQCM work there. There's another work we, I briefly mentioned, but I didn't emphasize is that, is that the uh, liquid uh, seams established by the uh, PNL group that turns out to be very, very useful. That's for the very first time that we observe the change of the uh, inner Helmholtz layer, you know, when you change the electrolyte composition and uh, change the potential. So that's uh, uh, one example shows us that if we, even we use the traditional uh, analytic tool and a new twist, we can still get a lot of a new uh, insights into the ACI. This is a entirely new frontier and we, we should spend more time on this. Well, that, that's really good. Uh, uh, I think the, the, these two of you's uh, thought adding together is just fantastic. Uh, let me add in a little bit as well to, to this question. Um, so and from the SCI, it looks like we need a technique we need to understand the solvation structure coming in. And then the SCI also need to have spatial resolution down to nanometer scale or molecular scale, both in their depth resolution as well as the lateral resolution. So we start thinking in mind, like some of the two you already mentioned of uh, uh, MMR, uh, can you just mention about the SIMS technique? I think this is a new technique coming out has been demonstrated uh, quite useful in the past two years is cryo, cryogenic electron microscopy, the uh, cryo EM that can stabilize the SCI to a certain degree so you can uh, study that. Uh, that one now having spatial resolution, uh, having some chemistry, uh, uh, a functional group can be identified by doing uh, either ears or, or elemental analysis or EDX and so on. So I think probably more tools will be needed. I, mean, I really want just many people uh, in the audience right there to think about what new tool they can bring into 
uh, studying this problem. That would be fantastic. So with that, I, I think I really like to thank both of you, Kang and uh, uh, Dorong for your you know, fantastic talks and also very nice discussion. And I, I learned a lot today. Um, for the next uh, symposium, that's on July 10th on Friday. Remember next week, next Friday, July 3rd, we don't have it because it's uh, close to July 4th, the uh, national holiday here in the United States. Many people are probably not in town on July 3rd, so we'll have it on July 10th. We'll have uh, Professor Yeming Chang for MIT, certainly a very well-known scientist, to join in. And it also looks like it's my turn to do some really hard work to also give the presentation uh, in, the, in the next symposium. Uh, at the end, let me thank all of you, all the audience, particularly the people in Asia stay very late with us every Friday. I know also for European people, you have probably very nice dinner time go along with this uh, speech. Uh, let me also thank Kang and Dorong for fantastic talk and participation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation and for um, this nice uh, discussion um, uh, leadership. Very nice. I okay. second. I also want to thank uh, Justin and uh, uh, Tracy for supporting. All right. I'll see you in the next thank symposium. You. Bye now. <laughs>